I would say that what keeps me going in the desire to continue, because the word was to continue, to continue to serve the Lord and his people as a Jesuit, I think it would be gratitude. Gratitude for so much that I have received from the Lord. And so much of that has been in the context of working with other people, helping other people. So that, that sense of gratitude. So if I'm to ask now, what is it that wants me to continue? I don't like to use the word payback, but really it is that. It's sort of paying back to the Lord for all the goodness that I have received as a Jesuit. And, uh, you know, my years, uh, many years, because I, I'm an old man, soon I'll be 87 years old. And when I entered the Society of Jesus, I was not yet 18 years old. So that's a long time of living Jesuit life. And after ordination, especially after ordination, it's, it's been in the variety of ways of serving God's people. So that, that's one thing. It, it's a, a, a sense of real gratitude for so much that I have received, so much. Uh, if I were not a Jesuit, I would not have had all these opportunities given to me. You know, when, when you realize that you've been given so much, there is a desire to want to pay back. Not, not so much because of any duty that you have to pay back, but because of gratitude. Love that shows itself in, in, in gratitude. So maybe I can give, but at the same time, I'm constantly receiving. And in the community that I'm living in now, my goodness, it's a wonderful community. I'm the community grandpa. <laughs> Most of the members of the community are 30 year old, 40 year old, and here I am, not yet 90, hoping to get to be 90. <laughs> but living with these companions who take wonderful care of me, so much care that I don't want to go to the wellness center. <laughs> it's, it's better to stay with these, these people. All right. <laughs> I was a second year high school student. My brother, a year older than me, everybody knew he wanted to be a priest. Because of that, I knew I did not want to be a priest. All right. But in those days, this was uh, just after the Second World War. Even those days, high school people were already wondering about what they were going to do in their life. I knew I did not want to be a priest. I knew that but I didn't know what I wanted to be. I was a student in a Jesuit high school. I was working with a fellow, with a Jesuit. He was the moderator of the school paper. I was the editor. So I became very close to him. One day, I'll never forget this. As long as I live, I'll never forget it. One day he was giving a, a sermon in the church we were gathered there because it was something like a recollection day. And he knelt down. I, I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, the grace that I'm asking for for this recollection is give me some sense of what, <clears throat> what I do want to be. All right. <clears throat> then uh, before Father Taylor knelt down to say a prayer before he went up to give the talk, I asked myself, why do I say I don't want to be like him? And the only reason that I could give is because I don't want to be, be just because of my brother. And I said to myself, what would happen if I said I do want to be like him? And at that, at that moment, I really felt the call. I'm not boasting, but at that moment I said yes, and I have never taken back that yes. So how did it start? Very naively. Did I know what it really meant to be a Jesuit? Of course not. 
I entered the novitiate. I was not yet 18 years old. We were more than 100 novices. No chance to have any individual direction. That's why I'm still here. <laughs> Jesuits, sinners, yet called. Called to be companions of Jesus. Join the Jesuits. <laughs> be happy. Be grateful. Be willing to serve. I think that question really applies to anyone, you know, to especially to to Christians who, I guess, who really want to be true to their faith. And I think that um, as a Jesuit, there's a if there's an added responsibility, siguro mas mas persistent in terms of living out our faith in spite of the values of the world, in spite of sinfulness, despite of uh, all our weaknesses and our um, failings. No? As a Jesuit, I think that um, there's a greater call to be more persistent in terms of preaching the values of Christ, of um, proclaiming His good news, so. Parang sa akin, pinagninilayan ko yung tanong. Parang bilang Eswita, parang kailangan medyo makapal yung mukha mo eh. Makapal in not in the sense na wala kang hiya, ano. Pero parang pag humaharap ka sa Diyos, mas mahalaga hindi yung pagkukulang mo. Pero yung paanyaya sa iyo ng Diyos na magmahal ka kahit na nagkukulang ka at makasalanan ka. So, um, I think being part of the Society of Jesus is a, is a privileged way of living this out, this pagiging makapalamuka bilang isang Kristiyano. No? Kasi you live with people who are... Hindi, ka, hindi naman makapalamuka, no? pero I think that Jesuits in general are very comfortable in their own skin. That's actually what one of the first things that attracted me to the society. You have very real people who are confident to be themselves in spite of their warts um, and uh, um, weaknesses. And yet they are people who, are, who have a certain degree of confidence also in the Lord, that the Lord calls them, calls us in spite of our lack and in spite of, I guess, all the things that we have done in the past and we continue to do, which are against the kingdom. Yeah, I was, um, I was in college, first year college. In high school, I had a, a dream. No? I, growing up, I had a dream. I wanted to become a father, as in tatay. I wanted to have my own family. Um, weird, pero ayoko magkaroon na asawa. Gusto ko lang magkaanak. <laughs> um, but in college, I went on a silent retreat with a Jesuit. And then, um, it was a very simple experience while, while he was sharing his experience of Christ with me during our conversations. I said, I want to do what he's doing. I want to... I want to make real Christ to other people in a very personal way. That was the first spark, if you could call it. Jesuits, sinners yet called to be companions of Jesus. Join the Jesuits.
Society of Jesus, ang pinakamalaking kongregasyon ng mga kalalakihang religyoso sa simbahang katolika. Ito ay itinatag ni San Ignacio de Loyola noong taong 1540. Kilalang kilala ang kwento ni Ignacio de Loyola. Isa siyang sundalo sa kaharian ng Espanya. Sa kasawi ang palat sa isang madugong labanan, siya ay malubhang nasugatan at muntika na mamatay. Ito ang naging daan ng kanyang pagbabagong buhay. Tinalikuran niya ang dati niyang buhay, naging peregrino at di kalaunan pari ng simbahan. Kasama ng siyam na kaibigan, nabuo ni Ignacio ang kapisana ni Jesus noong taong 1540. At opisyal namang kinilala ng simbahan noong taong 1550. Ngayon ang mga pari o hermano ng kapisana ni Jesus ay kilala sa tawag na Jesuita at sila ay laganap sa buong mundo. Nagkalat sila sa iba't ibang gawain o ministries. Karamihan ng mga Jesuita ay mga guro sa mga universidad tulad ng Ateneo de Manila University o ng Savior School. Subalit may mga Jesuita rin misyonero, siyentipiko, inhinyero, abogado, doktor, broadcaster, at musikero. Higit limampo ang mga santong Jesuita sa ngayon. Isang daan at limampo naman o 150 ang mga Jesuitang biyato o blessed. Si Jorge Bergoglio ang kauna-unahang Yeswita na naging Santo Papa. Ano man ang kanilang gawain o apostolado, ang bawat Yeswita ay inaasahan na mahusay sa pagtuturo ng pagdarasal at pangingilatis o discernment. Ito ang pinakapamana sa kanila ni San Ignacio na kinikilala ng simbahan bilang patron ng masinsinang pagdarasal o spiritual retreats. Ngayong taong 2021, ipinagdiriwang ng mga Yeswita ang ikalimang daang taon mula ng magbagong buhay si San Ignacio de Loyola, ang sundalo ng Espanya na naging kawal ni Kristo, ang makasalanan na naging santo. Good afternoon. Before we begin, please be reminded of the following. In accordance with campus guidelines, please observe the necessary health and safety protocols. Should you need medical assistance, please visit our medical station at the back. To preserve the solemnity of our Eucharistic celebration, please turn off or switch to silent mode all cellular phones. Please do this now. And for those who wish to donate to the General Fund of the Philippine Jesuit Aid Association, kindly refer to the information shown on your screen. The collection and all donations for this Mass will go to the scholarship fund of our Bukidnon missions. Thank you very much.
Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, after two years of restricted celebrations, the Society of Jesus in the Philippines joyfully welcomes everyone to this year's Solemnity of St. Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Society of Jesus and patron of the spiritual exercises as well as retreats. On January 1, 1872, Father General Peter John Bex consecrated the Society to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Amid the difficulties of his age, and at the same time grateful for all the good things he had received, he asked for the help of the Sacred Heart, his mercy, and the grace to live by Christ's very life. One hundred years later, on June 9, 1972, Father General Pedro Arupe renewed this consecration. With it, he recalled that Ignatian spirituality is based on the knowledge and deep love of Jesus Christ represented in his heart. Last May 20, 2021, the Society of Jesus and the Ignatian family started the worldwide celebration of an Ignatian year, which marked the 500th anniversary of St. Ignatius's conversion. And today, as we celebrate the culmination of this Ignatian year, Father General Arturo Sosa invites us to renew this consecration to the Sacred Heart so that the Heart of Christ may continue to enlighten and sustain our journey. Our presider this afternoon is the Very Reverend Father Primitivo Virai Jr., Provincial Superior of the Society of Jesus in the Philippines. Our homilist is Reverend Father Daniel Patrick Wong, Professor of Missiology at the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome. Please rise and let us join in the singing of the entrance hymn.
katatagan, kapayapaan sa hirang niyang sambayanan. Ayunan magbiwang, kaligayang kumulit ang tana ng Diyos sa kanyang tawanan. Na tayo'y tanggap at pawang minamanya. Diyos na Tanglaw sa araw siya'y liwanag Sinag naman ng buwan magdamag At ilaw magpakailanman In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Stay. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us give glory to God. up Saint Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name. Grant that by his help 
we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, so that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned to them and said, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost? to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I hope this is permitted. Happy feast to everyone. Let us begin with a word of thanks. We thank God for this chance to be together again to celebrate the Feast of St. Ignatius after three years. And we thank God for the gift of the Ignatian year, which is about to close today. When Father General Arturo Sosa announced the Ignatian year in September 2019, he had no idea that a few months later, 
the whole world would be completely overturned by this global pandemic. And yet, providentially, remembering St. Ignatius's cannonball experience this past year has helped many of us to hold on to hope. The upheavals we were going through were like what St. Ignatius experienced when the cannonball shattered his legs and his dreams 500 years ago. His story reminded us that trauma and the end of a story can become, by God's grace, the beginning of something new. His story invited us to hope that when plan A collapses, God's plan B may be waiting to unfold. Brothers and sisters, as we end the Ignatian year, perhaps it is the hope in Ignatius' story that we need to take with us as a gift and as a mission. You know better than I that hope is in short supply these days. Few of us face the future with optimism. If we were to use Ignatian language, many of us are probably in the grip of desolation, what Ignatius describes as darkness of soul, disquiet, not feeling hope and love. And understandably so, the pandemic is not yet over. We find ourselves in the midst of war, social division, an enormous environmental crisis, a fuel crisis, an increasingly serious food crisis. All over the world, democracy is in crisis. Linked to perhaps the most serious crisis of truth that our world has experienced because of the sheer magnitude and speed of disinformation. In Europe, many young people do not want to have children. Why bring another human being into this doomed planet? And these past weeks, back home, I've heard many people sharing about the heartbreak and disappointment close to despair of many young Filipinos, especially after the election. In such times, perhaps all of us in the Ignatian family are being called in a special way to be missionaries of hope, called to learn from the story of Ignatius how to live and how to share hope. You might ask, how can we come, become missionaries of hope in the face of such complex and difficult problems? Recently, I found a very beautiful book by a French Dominican working in Egypt, which helped me a great deal. The author of that book insists that hope is not optimism, that human expectation that things will get better, or that magical way of thinking that thinks that a magician god will make all the bad things go away. Hope is not optimism. Rather, he says, hope is courage. First, it is the courage to face harsh reality without seeking refuge in illusion. But second, hope is the courage to believe in a God who promises not quick fixes, but faithful presence. The God of surprises who in raising Jesus from the dead showed us that he is greater than our possibilities and imagination. Third, because of this faith, hope is the courage to continue loving and serving, knowing that love alone is eternal. And so no single act of love is ever wasted or fruitless. 
the courage to face reality, the courage to believe in the God of surprises, the courage to continue loving and serving. This is what hope is. And we see all these three elements of hope in the story of Ignatius. He had the courage to face reality. Ignatius had no illusions. From his own conversion experience, he saw that the human heart and human history are arenas of the unending battle between Christ and the enemy of the human nature, Satan. Good and evil continue to battle, and the forces under the standard of Christ, poor, humiliated, and humble, often seem to be losing. But second, he had the courage to believe in the God who is ever present and who is ever greater. By the river Cardoner, Ignatius saw all things new, all reality shining with God's love and God's presence, God active and God laboring, God communicating and God giving himself, God not looking from a distance or standing apart from life, but ceaselessly acting and entering into the world with love to renew it. And thus, over and over again, Ignatius had the courage to set out on new paths of love and service. So many times people sought to discourage him. At the beginning of his conversion in the autobiography, he recounts how his older brother, sensing that he was about to begin a new life, walked him around the castle of Loyola, used many arguments to discourage him, to dissuade him from throwing away his life. Ignatius listened respectfully, but he was not deterred, and, he says, he set out. Not knowing the details of the journey, but with the courage to risk the first step. This was just the beginning. Later, the Franciscans kicked Ignatius out of the Holy Land, where he had hoped to serve. In Spain, the Dominicans forbade him to speak of the things of God, and so he had and he forced him to be silent. He and his companions waited for a long time in Venice for the trip, for the boat that would take them to Jerusalem, but no boat ever came. By the time they arrived in Rome, they were maligned and persecuted. The point is, each time a door was closed, each time his plans were turned upside down, Ignatius could have given in to discouragement and given up. But each time he trusted in the God who was ever greater and set out on a new path. And because of that courage, that hope, we are all here today. Brothers and sisters, at the close of the Ignatian year, let us ask the Lord for the courage, the grace, the courage of hope, so that like Ignatius, we can be missionaries of hope to our brothers and sisters who struggle so much in these tough times. We ask the grace, we ask for courage to accept reality, to accept that things are challenging and difficult. But we ask too for the courage to see anew like Ignatius, to see that God is ever present and active in surprising ways in our world. I've repeated this very often, and some of you have heard me say this, but it bears repeating this sentence, these sentences from the Protestant theologian Eugene Peterson. He said, we underestimate God and we overestimate evil. We don't see what God is doing, and so we say God is doing nothing. We see everything evil is doing and say it is in control. I think that's why Pope Francis, during this pandemic, never tired of trying to ask us to look at all the people selflessly trying to help and serve. Health workers, teachers, government leaders, parents, neighbors. It's true that the pandemic unmasked many serious problems. But Pope Francis insists that during the pandemic, he saw an eruption of fraternity that he had never seen. People, all of us, can share stories 
of people generously, creatively seeking to help each other. To celebrate this eruption of fraternity, it's not simply to celebrate the human spirit, but to seek to glimpse the active, loving presence of God in our world. If we do not do this, we will not see God acting. We risk underestimating God and imprisoning ourselves in desolation. Finally, glimpsing God at work in the world, we pray for the courage to set out in love and service. We can be so overwhelmed by all the challenges before us. But perhaps the way to start is the way of Ignatius, simply to set out, to take the first step, to do the good that presents itself before us every day. In our gospel today, Jesus tells the parable of the builder and the king going waging war, both of whom must determine whether they have enough resources to build or to wage war. But precisely to build and to wage war, this is precisely what we are called to do as missionaries of hope, to build with Christ the eternal king, to build up persons, to build up faith, friendship, community, capacity, structures of justice and care, to wage war under the standard of Christ, not in the violent way of the world, but with the weapons of truth and love, to battle against everything inside us that weakens hope and commitment, to battle against the forces that would oppress and divide the human beings God loves. Two months ago, I attended a webinar in which the former general of the Dominicans, Father Timothy Radcliffe, spoke. He described a moving visit to the city of Homs in Syria. The city had all been, but been destroyed by the war. That was the city in which the Dutch Jesuit, Franz van der Lucht, had been murdered. Amidst the bombed out ruins, Father Radcliffe discovered a school for the disabled. And in that school, he saw one elderly Egyptian Jesuit teaching the children. In the sight of this old Jesuit, still teaching in a place that seemed to have no future, moved Father Radcliffe deeply. Perhaps it was because he saw in this Jesuit a missionary of hope, someone who despite everything had the courage to love and to serve, the courage to battle against ignorance, the courage to build the future by teaching children who are the future. In the end, hope is the courage of love taught to us by Jesus that we celebrate at every Eucharist. On the night of the Last Supper, when there seemed to be no future except betrayal and failure, Jesus continued to love and to serve, to give everything away, saying to his friends, this is my body given up for you. This is my blood given up for you. The Father took that courageous gift of love and made it unimaginably fruitful. And so we continue, we end this Ignatian year, and ultimately our hope is precisely in that love of Christ, the love of the heart of Christ. The conversion of Ignatius is the triumph of this love, the love of the Good Shepherd who sought the lost sheep and brought him home. If we feel lost in this world, perhaps the best thing to do in order to become a missionary of hope is to let the love of Christ find us. May we ourselves, may we let ourselves be found by the searching love of the heart of Christ so that placed with him, with Ignatius, we might become missionaries of hope.
these priors. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Heavenly Father that as we are united today here in the celebration of the Feast of St. Ignatius, may we also be united in asking Him. For every petition we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, the bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that they may be good shepherds and courageous witnesses to Christ's love by practicing charity, integrity in ministry, and promoting justice throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who serve in elected offices, that they may lead with discernment, integrity, and honor, respect for human life and dignity, promotion of ecological conversion, and the preferential option for the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the nations of the world, especially Myanmar, Ukraine, and Russia, that leaders may creatively find ways to bring an end to war and violence and promote lasting peace and genuine development. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the members of the Ignatian community and all the faithful, that as we celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius and culminate the 500th year of his conversion, we may imitate him in his deep love for Jesus and devotion to Christ's mission, so that in our daily lives, we may see all things new in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that the Lord may grant health to the sick, strength and comfort to all, and peace to those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all victims of conflict and violence, especially Genevin, Rosita, and Victor, and all those affected by the recent shooting incident, that the Lord may grant them healing, reconciliation, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, in times of despair and weakness, we find hope and strength in you. Hear our humble petitions and help us become persons of discernment so that we may see all things new in Christ, the perfect disciple of the Father, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please rise. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made, the font of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you summon us to imitate the discipline of Saint Ignatius, that we may hear the voice of the Spirit with docile and trusting hearts, and you move us to conform our life to Christ, that we might imitate him, the model of every virtue. Through him, O Father of mercy, we are preordained by you, that by responding to your gifts, we may complete the journey of faith, be sustained by the support of hope, be refreshed by the strength of love. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy <coughs> and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. <coughs> for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and with all the saints who is constant in your intercession, in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. Through the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and honest to our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family, whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, grant together to, grant, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those joining online, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For an orderly communion, please continue to observe health protocols and wait for the ushers to guide you.
please rise. Let us pray. May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving in honor of Saint Ignatius, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us remain standing as Father Provincial leads us in renewing the consecration of the society to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Heavenly Father, as Ignatius prayed in the small chapel of La Storta, you willed by a singular grace to grant the petition which he had been begging of you for a long time through the intercession of Our Lady to be placed with your son. In your words to him, you assured him of your support. I shall be with you. You asked Jesus carrying his cross to take him as your servant, and this he did in turning to Ignatius with those unforgettable words, it is my will that you serve us. As the followers of the handful of men who were the first companions of Jesus, we in our turn address to you the same prayer asking to be placed with your Son and to serve under the banner of the cross where Jesus is nailed out of obedience with his side pierced and his heart opened as a sign of his love for you and for all men and women. We renew today the consecration of the society to the heart of Jesus. We promise you all our fidelity and we ask for your grace to continue to serve you and to serve your Son with the same spirit and the same intensity as Ignatius and his companions. Through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, who received the prayer of Ignatius, and before the cross, where Jesus Christ gives to us the treasures of his open heart, through him and in him, we say from the very depths of our being, take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. Whatever I have or hold, you have given me. I restore it all to you and surrender it wholly to be governed by your will. Give me only your love and your grace, and I am rich enough and ask for nothing more.
Please be seated. Let us now watch a tribute video for our brother Jesuits who are celebrating their jubilees as priests and as Jesuits. Let us now listen to some words of gratitude from Father Provincial. Una sa lahat, isang maligayang, maligayang kapistahan ni San Ignacio sa ating lahat. First of all, let me thank everyone who made this year's St. Ignatius Day celebration meaningful and successful. As all of us know, we did not have this kind of gathering for the past two years due to the pandemic. So this year, it is a very special occasion for us to come together. It is our homecoming. There are so many of you I wish to thank. You know who you are, but let me mention only a few at this point. First of all, we thank our university president, Father Bobby Yap, and the Atene in Manila University for sponsoring our sound system and ice cream, which we shall enjoy after this Mass and for allowing campus access to everyone for this celebration. Thank you, Father Bobby. Of course, all the way from Rome, we thank Father Danny Wong from the Pontifical Gregorian University. Thank you, Father Danny. We wish to thank Father Nono Alfonso, Director of Jesuit Communications, and his hardworking team for organizing this uh, after the Mass, Bagong Buhay Ignatian Concert, which we shall watch later. Thank you, Father Nono and team. Of course, it will never be complete without the music. Thank you, Father Arnel Aquino, for the music today at Mass. And for the participating choirs, Hime Kesuita, Tinig Barranca, and the Pansol Choir.
We wish to thank the different university offices who are working behind the scenes to make this Mass and the concert beautiful and meaningful for all of us, especially for the Office of the President, uh, especially Ms. Joy Fernandez, Campus Safety Mobility Office, Campus Ministry Offices, Facilities and Management Offices, Community, Communications and Public Relations, Office of Mission and Identity. <clears throat> Special thanks, of course, goes to our servers, readers, Mother Butler from the Diocese of Cubao, and to all our ushers and from all our other apostolates. Let me thank Father Ro Atilano. Where's Father Ro? Father Ro is our overall coordinator of this year's province mass. Brother Melvin Paulme, please show yourself. Where are you? The assistant and all the scholastics of Loyola House of Studies and Arupe International Residence. And finally, thank you to all of you for coming here, for joining us in this wonderful celebration. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Let us all rise as we sing our song to Mary, our mother, mother of the church, and mother of the society of Jesus. After the final blessing, we shall partake of the refreshments available at the back of the courts. There will also be an Ignatian concert at 5 o'clock p.m. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I ask Father Danny and Father Bobby with me to bless our people. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who created you to praise, reverence, and serve Him by loving Him above all things and all things in Him, sustain you by the particular grace to be faithful in your calling. Amen. May Christ, who desired our Holy Father Ignatius to serve Him under the banner of the cross, call you to follow Him and make you faithful servants of His kingdom. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who inspired St. Ignatius and his companions to serve the Church even to the farthest ends of the earth, lead you to the reward promised to faithful laborers of the Gospel. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you 
and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please give us time to prepare our stage for the concert. We will begin in 30 minutes. In the meantime,